Hey guys and welcome to the show. So today we're going to be doing something that's actually a little different from what we've been doing over the past several weeks. We're going back to those one-hit wonders. This is going to be a video about planets and orbits. So before we get into this, make sure you subscribe and like this video if you really liked it, so that when other ones just like this, just as exciting and high energy come about, you'll be the first to know. So I've actually used this technique in many of my games. I think we had Element Earth, if you've tried that, we had little satellites that would fly around um, Earth and they'd shoot lasers at, at asteroids that got too close. I've also used this in a game um, I was creating called Solaris One, where one could actually go to the moon. So you had the Earth, and you had a, the, the moon, uh, was orbiting Earth and you could send a, a space shuttle to go land on it. It was quite exciting. These are some of my creations that I'll be going into at a later stage. I'd like to really share with you guys some of my prototypes I've made over the years. But in this video, we're just looking at something as simple as this. We have a big uh, planet and we have the satellite. It's just going around very lonely, round and around. We can control everything. We can control the, the orbits. It can be elliptical, um, circular. You know, we can, we can make it um, quite violent, really fast. All kinds of wonderful things. I'm not exactly sure where I found this solution. It was many, many years back. I have given it a couple of tweaks, um, but I can't say that I do own it in its entirety. This is just from from the from the internet somewhere. So without further ado, let's jump into the code. It's a ridiculously small amount of code. Like we don't even have to code anything for for this planet other than putting it in the center of the room. All of the code is in the satellite itself. Right. So here's our project. We've got the planet and we've got the satellite, very tiny. I'm going to create object planet, which is very simple. It's just gonna have an X and Y coordinate that is centered with the room um, because I want it to, to be centered, otherwise it's gonna look a little weird. So once we put in the, the code for the satellite, which we're creating next already, let's set the sprite planet. Yeah, once we go into the code, we're gonna be tweaking it to, to discover um, what each property does, because it's best we understand that if we're gonna be wanting to implement it in some of our games. So here's the satellite. Um, let's actually go into our world. Let's bring in our planet. Oh, I need to select a layer. There we go, bring in our planet. And let's bring in our satellite's gonna be over there. This will all center itself, and this guy will actually also center himself because we're gonna be giving him something to hang on to. So let's go into our create event. Some things we're gonna need, an angle. So this is actually our initial speed because basically what we're doing is we're just telling this the satellite to move and change its angle every time um, on some sort of trajectory and that's gonna kind of simulate that orbit around. So here we can have an offset. I'm gonna set that to 400. This is depending on the size of your objects. My planet is quite large. So I wanna set that uh, the degrees of ellipsis offset uh, from the center of, of the big planet. Then we're gonna go with a distance of 250. This is actually the, dis the distance away. Um, so distance away from planet. Then orbit, I'm gonna set that to two. In this case with this algorithm, a two is a circular orbit. We're gonna be tweaking all of these to see how they actually affect the outcome. Uh, then we've got the center X, which is object planet dot X, center Y, dot y if the planet in your game is also moving then these need to be updated in some sort of step event otherwise it's uh it's gonna orbit in uh space not in space time something to consider all right so that's the create event then we need a step now this is when the, the fun math is going to begin let's increase our angle by 0 0.2 um changing this one is going to increase our speed so 0.2 will keep it um, stable, but it'll it'll keep that kind of speed increment of, of one plus 0.2, and you'll see exactly what happens here. We need a new x and a new y coordinate. And this is length direction x. We're taking in the distance and the angle. And then here we're gonna say, I think it's length direction y also distance and uh, the angle 
but with this one we need to times it by the inverse so it's going to be one oops one minus orbit there we go then we need a cos a variable so that's the degrees to radians of the offset and then we need a sign which is also ooh, degrees to radians of the offset lovely and the new x will then be calculated as center x plus the new x uh, times by that cos uh, variable minus the new y times by the sign so yes i did say i think i did say it would get a little complex um so we're just going to trust in in this that it'll work and i promise you it will like that. So we're doing a bit of an inversey thing, using x's and um, adding other x's and minusing y's and, and, and this is using y's and minusing x's. Okay, so this is new y's not being used, but it is what isn't being used here. Variable orbit only referenced once. Oh, orbit. That's just a typo. Now, if I've typed this out right, that's all we need. So let's fire this up and hopefully I haven't uh, made a mistake. Ah, check this out. I've definitely, definitely made a mistake. Well, let's see, have I? Is it going to go on for... Oh. Oh. Oh, it's coming back. It's coming back. Okay. Te technically, that's an orbit. Obviously, not very realistic because it's not going behind the object at that point because of this uh, shape. So I've done something wrong. Let's see if we can find it. Here it is. I was talking all about those inverses, and this is supposed to be a plus. Silly me. Let's try again. Here we go, look at that. It's moving around exactly the same as the demo. So let's tweak some of the settings and see what each one does. How about that? Let's start with angle. So we've got an initial speed of one. What happens if we double this? Ah, it's moving faster. So if we put this on one, this thing's gonna be going well around quite quickly. Nice, okay, cool. So now this is spinning, maybe we can tweak with some of the other settings. So let's see, offset 400. Let's double that to 800. Hmm. I'm not seeing too much difference here. Let's try going for something smaller, like 200. So that would be half. Right, so it doesn't look like this variable is doing that much. Where is it actually being used? Offset. It's used in the cos and the sign. Interesting. Okay, let's move on. Let's leave this at 400. Let's try distance. I think this one we know what's going to happen. It's going to be uh, further away from the center of the planet. There we go, just as expected. Okay, that's more of a predictable property. I think, um, actually, let's put this at 300. I think that'll be great. Okay, so we've got this one, which is another really, really great property. Um, let's try and make it four. This is gonna change the shape of, of that orbit. Let's see what our greater value. Ah, look at that, a Saturn's kind of ring effect. I wonder if that offset is more prominent when the when the shape isn't circular. It's more of a ellipse. Whoa. Well, that's going far away now. Hold on, should this be bigger? Yeah, it looks like that's kind of directly related to that guy. So let's make this two again, and then we'll see that this doesn't really do much. Yeah, okay. 1.5 might be more manageable. Okay, very good. So these two, and that's also going to type out, these two kind of work hand in hand. I'm going to put them closer together because they should be uh, kind of paired if they are kind of affected by one another. Let's see if there's something really small with 1.5. Ah, quite neat. So obviously, um, one would would know the orbit of of the the pl of all this. So obviously, one would know the orbit of a satellite to the planet, because as you can see here, it's not really great if it's orbiting around the the front of the of the planet. I mean, it doesn't really work. So what you could do, and maybe this is something we can we can look at in a part two, is we would create a mask of some kind to show that this half of the planet's actually 
the other side of the planet and then we can put that on a different layer which means that this could be the front and it's coming around and when it connects with this half of the planet it'll then show behind it because it's actually behind the the topmost layer so that's quite exciting and something we can we can look at uh, next time because i think there's a lot that we can get out of out of this video and um, there's a lot of space related topics that i'm really excited about so i'm going to set this back to two and um i think that's actually all the properties very simple very straightforward i do invite you guys to tweak it a bit and you can make these orbits as big as you want you'll actually notice if you've played my game element earth that when the asteroids come closer to the planet they have a bit of a gravitational pull so you'll find it's coming like this then it gets to the planet and then it gets kind of curved which is quite cool i think you can use this code also to to do that so that about wraps up this video quick and easy next time we'll actually do some of the effects to get this to move behind the planet when it overlaps but again we'd have to we'd have to know where it's going to cross so that we can create that mask so if you found this tutorial educational helpful please feel free to comment rate and subscribe definitely subscribe you're not going to get videos like this if you don't subscribe and click that little bell icon so you get notifications the project files for this video can be found in the description as always I'll also link you to my Patreon if you like this video and want to support this channel. You could send a couple bucks my way, greatly appreciated. And yeah, feel free as, as always to make suggestions in the comments if there's cool space topics that you want me to cover. So until next time, happy coding, and I'll see you then.